We've made a lot of games, and between us we've made dozens and dozens of million plus selling games. Um, but Rocksmith is the only one that I've worked on that I've seen it change lives. Because a few people in a back room in San Francisco, with the help of a few studios dotted around the world, buckled down and delivered on something that we've all been dreaming about. So we set out immediately to do something different. You know, with Rocksmith 1, there was no game that went before us that we could say, it's kind of like that. We went down an, a, an avenue, we went down an obvious avenue too, which was trying to understand the heritage of the guitar, the heritage of the music. It, that push it, takes you down a certain avenue, a certain channel. And if you were to look at the reference of this stuff and to ring it out, then it would take you to the direction of Rocksmith 1. Rocksmith 1 was kind of dark. It had this kind of, I mean, we referred to the main space as a man cave. For many of us, that's not what music is. And although it's called Rocksmith, it's really, you know, music smith just doesn't sound as good. When we go to work on a sequel, we start looking at how do you make sure it feels completely different from the start. And we started to talk about how do you make it feel open and airy and nice and friendly and less intimidating. We literally, we had this idea of the, this is inclusive and it's, it's the opposite of Man Cave, but it's, it's still credible. Like we were always hanging on to the credibility, you know, the gear and the guitars and all this stuff. My favorite phrase in the world with regards to this is blues lawyer. Like guys who can play a little bit, who buy like really expensive tacky guitars. Uh, we wanted to stay out of that. That's not particularly everyone's cup of tea. Right. You know, we <clears throat> did want to be a lot more fun. You know, we wanted to appeal to a broader audience. You know, in our working environment and in the presentation of Rocksmith, it was very masculine. It was just Boys too club. much testosterone going on. In terms of our direction, looking at reference, we had to look at interior design. We're looking at fashion design. We're looking at album cover art. You know, we're really branching out in terms of yeah. what was relevant, what was fashionable. We just started throwing everything at the wall that we could. It's not like we walked in one day and said, there's a white wall and some wood. And like, no, that was like a good three months. I was pulling a lot of reference of, for some character stuff that we were trying to explore of, from the kills. And there was this great picture of the two of them, but it was like on, on this like blue linoleum floor with like a, a, a plain white wall. And I took that and I, went, and I painted it out and I kind of made it into this widescreen thing and I was gonna put the UI in front of it. And then Omar, we were talking about it and he's like, it's really, really cold. We should put some hardwood, we should put a hardwood floor on that. And like, we did that and we we're like, that was it. Yeah, and everyone that walked by said, cool, I love that. You know, just really, it was, it's just the appeal of that landscape. Yeah. When you see this image of a guy in a room like this and you think, oh, that's cool. You know, I wouldn't mind being in an apartment like that, or maybe you do live in an apartment like that. Um, and it looks friendly and normal and believable and honest. The loft is slightly ambiguous on purpose, whether it be a loft or a gallery space or a studio space, people make their own interpretation of that. And in doing so, that's their level of attachment to that space. The set for the lesson video, it was essentially our ideal studio space. We really wanted to brighten up the game, so it was just, mm. just all that more inviting, you could really just feel like, yeah, I could learn guitar here. I think it works, you know, everyone that came into that space loved it, everyone was really inspired by it, and we didn't want to take it down. We talk about the menus a lot, and trust me, we talked about them a lot over the last few years. It started off by just talking about it and saying, we're going to do this and we're just going to have it wide open. So you see the main menu and it's just bam, 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 bam. These are the things you need. It's clear that it's going to be easily, readily accessible. So those changes in structure, all those things, it comes out, really comes out of listening to the feedback, reading the reviews and our own personal experiences. The visuals for the game, we wanted something very audio reactive. And the first one, we were very literal in, in terms of we put you on stage, you were playing in front of an audience and you were in a club, you are in a And those are real bar. people, I can see her eyes right there. We were very literal and we spent a lot of time and resources creating those things. Those things that weren't really essential for you learning the guitar. We needed something in a backdrop that would help and encourage and be emotive. And so we went quite far in the direction of audio, reactive graphics. Procedurally driven by your guitar. You know, it's you and your energy and your sound driving those visuals, you know. It's your vision quest. 
The only area that we're really full on with stylistically was the guitar gate area. You know, yeah. it had to be a contrast. It had to go bang, you know, you're in guitar gate. It had to really shout out at you. But even then, you're not, you're not literally in an arcade. No. Which, but again, was another, was another happy accident because we were going to do that. And then we, we, had to, we had to dial it back. Yeah. I should say that we did it on purpose and we look like geniuses. <laughs> Aesthetically, games are like stunted, right? And so there's always that little bit of like, ah, we could do better than that. There's this pursuit for realism, isn't there? Which is one direction. And that's just one side of it. I think in video games, we there is a level of responsibility to do something very creative as well and really branch off in that direction. And we're not bound by reality.